Coming up tonight on YCN News, we'll hear from David Kidder, who spoke about the process for electing the new Speaker of the House for New Hampshire, a deadline extension for farmers insurance, and we'll find out just how severe this flu season is expected to be. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YZN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening and welcome to this Friday edition of YCN News. I'm Laura James. The lead up to Wednesday's vote in Concord for a new Speaker of the New Hampshire House proved anything but dull. Former House Speaker Republican nominee Bill O'Brien lost the race he had been expected to win to Republican Sean Jasper. Stephen Shirtliff, the Democrats' nominee, withdrew his candidacy when Jasper came forward to ask for all fellow state representatives' support. Today, YCN News spoke with state representative from New London, David Kidder, about the vote. Uh, shortly after the uh, caucus vote, uh, there were some of us that were individually and maybe some of us collectively talking that this wasn't something we were happy with. Um, and uh, I had been approached about running for speaker and uh, some, a couple of other people, including Sean Jasper. Uh, and I decided I did not want to do that. Um, and Sean decided that he did. So um, we got on board and made a few calls and uh, tried to keep it as quiet as we could, but at the same time, we were trying to uh, determine roughly how many Republicans uh, that we could get to vote uh, with us and we'll vote with the Democrats who we knew would vote for Sean over Representative O'Brien. Um, there is a precedent in 2004, the same kind of thing happened with Doug Scammon was elected. And uh, basically it's the, uh, uh, the Democrats and some moderate Republicans electing a moderate speaker. And this happened uh, again on, uh, on Tuesday. And uh, I think it caught a lot of people a little bit by surprise. The full interview can be seen after the commercial break as we begin our second news segment. Stay tuned. Dairy farmers now have another two weeks to apply for a milk margin price protection plan. Application is voluntary and the new date to apply is by December 19th. The federal plan is designed to protect dairy producers from losing money if milk prices fall. As we reported on Tuesday, guides on the website can help dairy producers determine how much insurance is needed for their farm. The website is fsa.usda.gov. For Vermont dairy farmers to learn more, call the University of Vermont Extension Services at 802-349. 2966. Dairy Farmers in New Hampshire called the University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension at 603-862-1520. There's still time to get a flu shot and health officials with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are urging people to do so. Per the CDC.gov website, early data suggests the 2014-2015 flu season could be severe. A strain of the flu virus known as H3N2 is more prevalent this year. The H3N2 strain made its mark during three earlier flu seasons in 2012, 2007, and 2003. Now that's the strain that made people sicker during those years and resulted in more deaths caused by the flu. Getting a flu shot does not guarantee the person will absolutely not get sick, yet it typically helps the effects of flu be less severe. CDC Director Dr. Tom Frieden said a three-pronged plan to fight the flu benefits all. This means getting vaccination, prompt treatment for people who get sick, including staying home when sick to protect other people. In New Hampshire, the Deputy State Fire Marshal is being promoted to a new job. Keith Roddenheiser is now the Bureau Commander in charge of the Bureau's investigations within the State Fire Marshal's office. Roddenheiser will oversee the work of 28 people, 
assigned to the Investigations Bureau, says State Fire Marshal William Degnan. The Bureau of Investigations is responsible for the fire and life safety inspections, including fireworks and hazardous materials. Rodenheiser's career in public safety includes fire and police service. He is also Deputy Fire Chief for the Peterborough Fire and Rescue Department and has 18 years of experience as a police officer in New Hampshire. And in Vermont, several high-profile state jobs are now held by new employees. Justin Johnson is the new Secretary of Administration, taking over for Jeb Spaulding. Spaulding, in January, will be the Chancellor of the Vermont State College System. Johnson now serves as the Deputy Secretary of the Agency of Natural Resources. Also, Dr. Harry Chen will return to his new role as the Commissioner of the Vermont Department of Health. Chen has been serving as the Interim Secretary of Human Services following former Secretary Doug Racine's resignation. Hal Cohen will be the new Agency of Human Services Secretary, effective this January. Cohen comes to the AHS from Capstone Community Action. When YCN News returns, we bring you the full interview with David Kidder regarding the new House Speaker. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Laura James. Let's now speak with New Hampshire Representative David Kidder. What happened between November 18th, the day of O'Brien's nomination to again be Speaker, and yesterday's vote on the House floor? Uh, shortly after the uh, caucus vote, uh, there were some of us that were individually and maybe some of us collectively talking that this wasn't something we were happy with. Um, and uh, I had been approached about running for speaker and uh, some, a couple of other people, including Sean Jasper. Uh, and I decided I did not want to do that. Um, and Sean decided that he did. So um, we got on board and made some few calls and uh, tried to keep it as quiet as we could, but at the same time, we were trying to uh, determine roughly how many Republicans uh, that we could get to vote uh, with us and we'll vote with the Democrats who we knew would vote for Sean over Representative O'Brien. Um, there is a precedent in 2004, the same kind of thing happened with Doug Scammon was elected. And uh, basically it's the uh, uh, the Democrats and some moderate Republicans electing a moderate speaker. And this happened uh, again on, uh, on Tuesday, and uh, I think it caught a lot of people a little bit by surprise. What was the timeline between the start of yesterday's vote and the final vote? It was a lot of parliamentary maneuvering. Uh, the O'Brien group uh, tried to change the rules so that it was not a private ballot, that it was going to be a roll call vote, which is recorded. Um, that has never been done before uh, in the House in, a, in an internal vote for Speaker. Um, and most of the, I think a lot of people at that point started to say, ooh, wait a minute, this may, this sounds a lot like the old Bill O'Brien. Uh, but my feeling is that at that point, people started to think, wow, uh, we really, it has to be a private vote because we don't want the intimidation factor that he could uh, start intimidating people and saying, well, you voted against me, so you're going on the committee in the cellar and your parking spots in Manchester, <laughs> which is where I would have been. <laughs> what makes this election different from the normal procedure? Normally, it's a pretty cut and dried. The uh, majority party has a clear majority and, and they vote. The Republican Party at this point is uh, somewhat disjointed and uh, there are uh, folks that support Representative O'Brien and there are some of us that don't and feel that we need a more uh, uh, bipartisan approach to doing things in, in everybody working together. I tell the story of my first term uh, when Doug Scammon was elected in a very similar situation. And for the first six months I was there on the Commerce Committee, I didn't know who was a Republican or a Democrat, and I didn't care. It didn't matter. Um, so 
I think that the we really need to have um, needed to have a change. Uh, the last few times it's been either Terry Norelli or uh, Bill O'Brien, and I think this is a very positive change for the people of New Hampshire and a, a great change for the House. And I think the House, in its collective wisdom, saw that and sensed that and voted appropriately. What message does Jasper's win over O'Brien send to other New Hampshire lawmakers? I think the message is that we're going to try and work together and solve some problems. Um, Sean is clearly a, a true Republican, and like he said on the floor, he said the chairman's, chairman will be Republicans, the vice chairs will be Republicans. And, but he and Steve Shirtliff, who is the Democratic, uh, the minority leader at this point, um, have a really good relationship, have known each other for years. And uh, I think we can all feel like we can all work together and hopefully we can solve some of the pressing problems of the state of New Hampshire. What about to residents and business owners? There's hope. <laughs> with Christmas and other winter holidays right around the corner, we visit today with a service group that's got the right spirit. The Claremont Rotary Club is making a strong revival in this city. Lynn Gerard Golden Cross Ambulance here at the Common Man in Claremont, New Hampshire. We have a tree decorating contest going on here at the Common Man and the Rotary Club is going to put a tree in the contest. The Claremont Rotary Club is a new club in the area and we're trying to settle our heels in and build a strong foundation and right now we're looking for um, membership, we're looking for awareness, we're looking to build relations. We want folks to know that we're here. We want to be part of the community and to offer support where the community needs support. Unlike other clubs, the Rotary Club is community-based, so we will help young people, old people. Rotarians are, are a wonderful organization. We're always looking for new people. And to remember that even though we're working toward our local community, Rotary is an international organization. And one of the things that Rotary has done and is remarkable is their effort to stamp out polio. The Log Cabin Nursery here in town were wonderful, providing us with some fabulous um, mid-size wreaths that were very affordable to us. We were then able to get together as a, as a Rotarian group and put the decorations on and sell them. And as of today, uh, we, have, we had started with 100 wreaths. Every one of them has been sold and delivered. I'm hoping that this project is going to net us approximately $1,000. And next year, if um, I do a little more homework and we, we purchase the ribbons and the cones and the supplies, uh, it's possible that, that our efforts could reap more. Of the wreaths that I personally sold, I had folks that reached out to me and said, we are looking for somebody, an organization that we can support. We want to purchase our holiday wreath. And I was able to fulfill that need. Our thanks to the Claremont Rotary Club for their work on the community's behalf. When YCN News returns, we'll join Kirtage Chronicles' Sean Bowman. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Laura James. Let's join Matt McDonald for weather and sports. Thanks, Laura. Tonight, be careful driving as we will have snow and sleet and possible freezing rain. Lows will be around 28. On Saturday, we will have rain showers before noon. Highs will be near 37 degrees. That night, rain is likely with lows around 24. Sunday should be sunny with highs near 28. And Sunday night should be mostly clear with lows around 12 degrees. Snow Country Snapshot is brought to you by Bubba's Bar and Grill in Newbury, New Hampshire. And we're back. Ski season is underway. Hallie O'Brien here with the Snow Country Snapshot at Bretton Woods in New Hampshire, the largest ski area in New Hampshire. And their snow and grooming is top notch. I know this because the readers of Ski Magazine voted them number one for snow and grooming two years running. And it's because of machines like this. Last week's fresh snow got us pumped up for a strong start to the ski season and the snowmakers have covered miles of big mountain trails. So if you want some early season action, the slopes are ready. 
Mount Sunapee has long top-to-bottom slopes off the main mountain and easier terrain on their south peak. They have up to four miles of trails, while Pat's Peak returns Saturday with more than half their terrain. What makes you want to be a groomer here? It started off in the terrain parks, and I was a little too picky with how I wanted the machine run, so they, they said, you want it done that way? Go ahead and do it yourself. Favorite part of the job? Uh, I spend a lot of time building terrain parks. You know, when you're getting out of the cat at, you know, 8 in the morning, all the kids running out, they want to know what's new in the park, and I like it. You're like the terrain park Santa Claus. Okimo just installed a brand new six-pack high-speed bubble chair, which means it's protecting you from the elements from bottom to top. Stratton picks up another four inches of snow on Wednesday, and they'll top that off with snowmaking the rest of the week. The Stratton gondola and high-speed six-pack chairs are already turning. I'm Hallie O'Brien. This is the Snow Country Snapshot, and we'll see you next week. What do you think this button does? And now let's take a look at our community calendar. There are some holiday events tomorrow. In Springfield, Vermont, check out the St. Nicholas Bazaar at the Holy Trinity Orthodox Church starting at 8 a.m. The Holiday Craft Expo will happen tomorrow in Charlestown, New Hampshire starting at 9 a.m. at the Town Hall. A Winter Fair will happen in Queechy, Vermont at the Upper Valley Waldorf School from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnow.com. Turning to Manchester Monarchs news, just a reminder that there will be two games this week. Tonight is the first game. The Monarchs are facing Portland at the Cross Insurance Arena in Portland, Maine, starting at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, Manchester will host the Norfolk Admirals. The game starts at 7 p.m. also. YCN will bring in the results of these games next Monday. Thanks so much, Matt. When we return, we'll join Lisa Cannell and John O'Connor for this week's News and Review. The YCN News continues in a moment. 